Hi, my name is Randy Siebold, Vice President for Education at Weimar Center for Health and Education and Dean of Weimar College. And I have with me Dr. Moore, Dr. Leroy Moore. Glad you're taking some time and coming to be with us. It's a delight. Good. I'm glad you're here. And, and uh, so now your role at the college is in the religion department. Yes. And uh, I must say a pillar in, in the religion department and the students and joy, I just love. In fact, we were just talking a little bit ago, and I want to pick up on this. Uh, it, and I asked you this question. I'll do it again. If the students, uh, we asked the students, what's one of the most powerful things you've learned in one of Dr. Moore's classes? And by the way, and you probably know this, there's the conversation, you know, uh, that goes around with the students. Dr. Moore's class. Boy, you have got to be in Dr. Moore's class. You have got to take a Dr. Moore class. So anyway, what would they say? What do you think they would say is one of the most powerful things that they've learned in a Dr. Moore class? Well, I think they probably would be saying something about priesthood of believers. The, the, the principles. The principles that come out of, of priesthood of believers, which, by the way, I believe uh, was what was lacking at Minneapolis. Mm. The reason, the primary reason for failure of Minneapolis was uh, a failure to follow priesthood of believer principles, which would have reunited them. Instead, they entered into debate, which divided them. Mm. And, now, is the, you're, you're referring to the 1888? Yes, the 1888 conflict at Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, all right. And, uh, and then you also mentioned that there were a couple of... Uh, uh, goals or purposes of your life were uh, principles that just sort of yeah. drive your ministry. Well, the things that that direct my ministry now are what have directed it throughout. And uh, there are two basic things. One has to do with the nature of truth, mm -hmm. and the other has to do with basically how are we going to relate to truth and to each other. And in one, I speak of it as paradoxical principles, which simply means that all truth, and by the way, if they didn't mention the other, they'd probably <laughs> mention this one. I think so. Which means that all truths are balanced. I call it bipolar. Recently, I've been calling it dipolar because bipolar has taken on a medical <laughs> meaning that doesn't relate to it. Okay. <laughs> and both words are... are um, Work fine in there. Uh, yeah, they, they okay. have the same meaning. Okay, all right, all right. But... Uh, that, so you're, you're talking about truth as being, uh, having poles of truth? Is yes, that, yes. Okay, so give me an explanation of that. Just a, Now, we're not getting into a lesson, so this isn't gonna, <laughs> it's not going to be the 20-minute version, even though that wouldn't be long. Yes. Can you break that, that down into a tight little package? Yes, yes. well, the, probably the best example is law and grace. Okay, all right. Uh, w Christianity, from the beginning, has been in tension over the relationship between mm. these two. And uh, the human mind is so designed that without a direct connection with Christ, we will focus on one or the other of those poles. Mm. And that's the reason why Christ-centered thinking is so important. Mm -hmm. Christ is the truth. He is the whole of truth. He is the law embodied. He is the source of grace. Mm. And so when we focus upon Christ, we are really bringing the two great poles by the way, this, these two principles are the basis for a great deal, I could say most, mm -hmm. of the conflict in the Christian church in the mm. last 18, 1900 years. And by focusing upon Christ, we bring these poles together unless grace and law are fused so that they actually become one. You can look at one side, you can look at the other, but never look at this side without the context of the other. I see, I see. Or this side without the become, context. Become unbalanced. Yeah, we can Now, unbalanced. I remember as you explained this one time in one of our chapels, uh, and I see you in your hand gestures referring to it, but I, I, I'd like the viewers to see this, this idea of um, like a roofing system where yeah. you have, yeah. you know, this... Uh, and this beam and this beam and they come together that without one of those beams it would fall. That's right. In that same kind yeah. of a way. Each truth, 
the integrity of each truth is dependent upon its relationship to, to the, the other. other. Yeah, and then and then this other one, this other one that is uh, uh, priesthood of believers. Yeah, the, the priesthood of believers yeah. principles, the one that was the fall, and 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 uh, and seems the, the the common fall among many is this idea of. Uh, priesthood of believers, as you've talked before, just unpack that for us just a little bit. Well, the key to priesthood of believers is humility. Mm. Uh, there are many things that could be said, and by the way, a half hour lecture would be short. Okay. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We... But to get it right to the point, uh, priesthood of believers really has to do with the unity of the body of Christ. He is the head, we are the body, mm -hmm. and we're all priests. There may be specialists called pastors, mm -hmm. others evangelists, but this is what Paul is talking about. Every single one of the organs of the body is ministering to every other one, mm. and if this any one fails to relate properly, we begin. We call that sickness. And in our church, we need to humble ourselves one to another, so we're all serving each other. When there's a conflict. The important thing is that we come together with the scripture as our authority and with prayer that God will unite us mm -hmm. in truth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not that he will help us to convince the others well, of the, truth. These sound like extremely powerful principles uh, and hearing you talk about them in the past and I think you just, you know, wetting appetites for anyone looking on. Uh, this is amazing. But share just a little bit about how you've come to these discoveries or maybe a little bit about your history. You've been uh, involved in the ministry for at least a couple of years now, haven't you? A little more. <laughs> <laughs> Since yes, well, uh, 19... We are, it, we've been, this is our 57th year. Of ministry. Yes, of course we retired do you, do you actually, and a half years ago. Do you count the years? You, you, you kind of calculate it out every year? As I well, do. how do you keep track of that? <laughs> it's not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Our ministry began a few months before our marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm sorry, before my graduation. Okay. And the graduation was two years after marriage. So okay. it's not hard. I always okay. remember Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, that's good. That, that's and probably way, a good thing. <laughs> yes. We are uh, we're in, into our 59th. Oh, praise the Lord. Be our, June will be our 59th anniversary. Praise the Lord. You're just uh, a wonderful pillar on campus, a, a great, and bringing the balancing truths and, uh, and uh, the need for humility and listening to others. Uh, those are great truths to have in, in this college atmosphere. So you've been a uh, pastor and teacher and uh, college president, and you've been around... Now, what what keeps you busy now as you come to Weimar, and what is the what is the draw at Weimar? Why why come to Weimar? Why well, Weimar College? Well, for one thing, I happen to have a a case of diabetes that is not easy to beat. Mm. Been working on it for years. We felt that if we came here, this is not the primary reason, but we felt if we came mm -hmm. here because of our New Start program mm -hmm. and that I would be eating in the dining room. We're volunteers mm -hmm. and uh, we felt that would be helpful. And that was one. The, of course, the main reason is because I've looked at Weimar ever since its establishment mm -hmm. and thought that's where I really would like to be. Wow. Uh, let me just go back for a little bit though and share. My ministry has been a ministry of reconciliation. Okay, well, what do you mean by that? Well, to bring together those who are alienated. Mm -hmm. In 1950, when I uh, was led to be at Wildwood mm -hmm. for a few months, uh, I didn't actually, I thought maybe that was the place to get a little training because I thought Armageddon was right ahead. Mm. And I wanted to get in the work beforehand. The Lord led me there and he led me away. But while I was there, I found out about what we used to call self-supporting work, mm -hmm. lay ministry is what mm -hmm. it involves, and I became very interested in it. Mm -hmm. That wasn't where God wanted me at the time. 
but I became committed to it. Mm -hmm. But I also was committed to something else. I found that there was a, a lot of tension between that institution and the mother institution, the church, mm -hmm. the denomination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, both were doing the best they knew how. And uh, I felt that tension had to be dealt with. When I left there, I was just a young fellow, but I left there with a, min a mission. And that mission was to spend my lifetime in ministry seeking to bring together alienated groups. Mm. And so all the books I've written have all had to do, my first one had to do with Desmond Ford and so forth, mm -hmm. but they have all had to do with reconciliation, mm -hmm. bringing together those who are estranged. And here is where my concept of paradox began actually before I was through college, and that is that much of our conflict has to do with, with the fact that we're looking at different poles of truth. Without seeing it in Without balance with the other, the right? unity of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, one more thing. Uh, you're working now on a, on a book that is just, just at the final stages. Yes. Can you give us just a short synopsis of what that's about? Well, uh, the previous book that came out last year focused mostly uh, on uh, the paradoxical principle of the unity of truth. Okay. Which is, these two are really essential to each other. Mm -hmm. This one focuses primarily on priesthood of believer principles, but it uses um, uh, Wagoner and Jones, who were the principal speakers at Minneapolis mm -hmm. when that great conflict took place. Uh, it, the whole thing revolves around them, uh, their initial work, uh, what happened as a result of conflict and eventually why they went out. So it's both revealing the uh, principle of priesthood of believers yeah. as well as using the con historical context of the Minneapolis yes. 1888. So far all my books are historically related. Hmm. I believe that if we do not learn from history we're doomed to repeat its errors indefinitely. And I think what we want to do is learn from those errors and, and allow Jesus to come back. We, yes. we really yes. grab these principles and really change our lives. And, and may I say, the, probably the key kernel of my focus in focusing on history is to see ourselves mm. in those who failed, mm -hmm. but not in a context of failure. <laughs> But in a, in a sense where we can begin to understand why they failed, they were good people mm -hmm. uh, on both sides. Mm -hmm. But they were not, they did not grasp the paradoxical principles of truth. Mm -hmm. They did not experience the, the uh, priesthood of believers. As a result, they failed. We too have been failing ever since for the mm -hmm. same reasons. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, however, that God is bringing us to a point of victory. Uh, I see the but young that, people very inspired. Yes, but that victory will come through defeat, mm -hmm. the defeat itself. Amen, amen. The greatest problem we face is pride. Wow, and uh, what a note to end on. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking your time and coming out here. We appreciate your work here at the ministry, your ministry at Weimar College to the students, and I can know I can speak for the faculty and the students. That thank you. Well, I appreciate that. May I have one final word? Well, sure. All of my ministry has focused on Weimar. What I'm saying is that Weimar has provided a context that I've looked for hmm. for all these years, where we have a, a whole group of people seeking the same objective. I've worked with many good people, but I've never been in a, a, a con, uh, context, mm -hmm. an environment. Mm -hmm. Not only do we have a beautiful environment mm -hmm. and helpful environment, but uh, we have a, an environment of, of focus, mm -hmm. a focus on Christ and on not finishing his work, we can never do it, but allowing him to finish his work through us. Amen. Lord, let that be. 
Thank you for joining us and glad you could spend some time with us and meeting Dr. Moore.